Do you think that people should follow their dreams? And along those lines, if they should follow their dreams, when should an artist leave their day job? Boy, that, that's a tricky one. It's a really tricky question because there's a part of me. I'll give you, this is my committee giving several answers. Okay. okay. There's a part of me that says, don't leave your, don't leave your day job until it becomes absolutely impossible to stay in it because of the dream you're following. See how long you can stay in the day job. Um, and I'm just thinking about security and all that. Then there's another part uh, that says, oh, leave it. Just go at any time. Now, I'm, in, some, in some ways, I'm not a great person to ask this because um, when I started in this business, I've had very few, quote, day jobs. I've, been, I've just been able to create a lot of jobs or create a lot of work or do a lot of things that I wanted to do. And then there were times years and years and years ago, 30, 40 years ago, I had day jobs uh, while I was still pursuing this. But as soon as I got a job directing or a job something in the business, day job was gone immediately. So I was one of those that would just quit immediately. But then sometimes months later, I would find myself in deep trouble because that job was over. The job I did, it was fine, that done, but there was no job following it. And then I was found myself scrambling again to put something together, at least to support myself. So I don't, you know, but the following of the dreams, I think the, the big question is, do you have a plan? Do you have a vision of how you're going to uh, pursue uh, what you want? And this is also from personal experience. I've um, at times um, unfortunately relied too heavily on jobs showing up or someone helping me out and not taking care of it myself. Then I've swung the other way and created a whole business on my own to support myself, which is and still in my business, which I'm doing now, to support myself. So I've gone both, both ways. I think it's looking at what is, what is my plan? What is my plan for today? Or let's put it this way. This has something to do with what Elsha and I are looking into now, is what your dream where do you imagine you would be five years from now following your dream? Can you imagine where you would be and what, and just write about what that is and describe what that is? Okay, now come back. Where, where would you be five months from now in that dream? Describe that. Okay, then you come back. Where would you be five days from now? following your dream. And can you describe that? Now you've, you've described goals and pinpoints. And then the last thing is, what can you do in the next hour to fulfill that dream? Doing that, you'll start to see possibly a plan, a goal, a, a map of some sort. I think too many people following dreams, I want to be a great actress, I want to be a great writer, but there's no map. There's no, I'm going to, I'm going to write a screenplay, um, three screenplays this year, three different genres. That's a plan. Can you do that while you have your day job? Sure you can. So I think it's a matter of really being realistic about not just what the dream is, but what, how you envision you might get there. Chances are it won't work exactly that way, but chances are if you have that vision, you're going to come somewhat closer, or at least be moving in that direction. Are you almost relieved that you didn't um, take a day job? You know, you said you would work at one directing thing or something, and then as many industry jobs, another one. Mm -hmm. um, but if you had had something more cush or that it was just more stable, then you wouldn't have created what you've created. More cush or stable, like what? Well, if, if you just had like this steady job after job, you said sometimes you, you waited and you relied too much on a job being there for you, mm -hmm. and, and maybe it wasn't at times. Yeah. Maybe that was a painful lesson. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that in some ways that was a good painful lesson because then it, 
ignited in you to start, you know, what you started and, and write and do these classes and and the Travis Institute and all these yeah. different things. Yeah, it's I mean it, it did the everything I'm doing now and that Elsha and I are doing now together, which started many, many years ago, um, was generated, was started out of that desperation. Out of that desperation, I have to do something. And because of who I am or whatever, my personality, what I did not pursue was a typical day job, whether it's waiting on tables or working for a company or something like that. My fallback has always been create something. So I would create a job. And that was creating workshops that I was teaching, first for actors and then for directors. And I would keep creating something that didn't exist that I could do, which would keep me close to what I was doing anyway. I didn't want to go and work in, you know, nine to five in some, you know, office building. I just, that would be just too devastating to me and too demoralizing for me. So that's what I would do. But I would wait a long time before doing that until it was desperate. And then I would have to put something together rather quickly to keep everything going. Then ironically, with the teaching that I was doing, it became more than just a day job. It became an entire business. It became an entire business that you know resulted in what I'm doing now, which is traveling around the world and teaching. And many times I go, well, what, what happened to my other job? The directing thing, all the other stuff I was doing, because this has become um, so, you know, massive of what I'm doing, and now with Elsha, what Elsha and I are doing together, that um, it has taken over. And sometimes I, I think, what would happen? What would happen now if I was offered a, a directing thing? I, well, we'd have to make some big shifts and changes. So, but that, and that's okay. But that, that's the way my life has always been. It's always been. Um, a bit chaotic and under my control, which means sometimes out of control. But at the end of the day, you're still working with story. Still doing the and same thing. And that's something you love. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, if, well, if you're going to create something, you might as well create something you enjoy doing. So I wouldn't create something I enjoy doing or, or that I knew I was good at and that I could survive at if I could just construct something um, along the line. So the teaching and the coaching and the consulting and all of that falls right in that, although it's not directing, but you know, it's all around it. It's, it's, and all my directing skills and my writing skills, you know, um, supply that, support that, that process. So I'm not that far away from what I was doing. In fact, I've moved way beyond what I was doing. So again, going back to when should an artist create, uh, when should an artist quit their day job? It's when it becomes unbearable at that day job. Unbearable. Or their other thing becomes undeniable in terms of supporting them. Unbearable, yeah. undeniable. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's sort of in that zone. The reason I'm hesitating is because I just remembered something um, that happened to me. There were, again, doing a lot of the teaching stuff, there was a time, this is back in the early 90s, and I was teaching a lot of workshops and um, doing, a, you know, doing what I was doing, teaching workshops and, and, and trying to get directing jobs. And through a ser series of circumstances, which are not important right at the moment, I got a job um, directing a feature film for Warner Brothers, okay? <clears throat> and that was a long story on how that all happened. That's not important. And I, the, the important part is, okay, now I'm directing this film. It's a low budget film, but it's for a major studio and I'm getting all the studio support and everything's going fine. And I'm still doing my other, I'm still running workshops. I'm doing everything else I was, and I'm used to doing 12 things at the same time anyway. And that's what my life was like. And I would have clients I would work with. And I remember one meeting and we're going into pre-production where the producers from Warner Brothers sat me down and said, ah, Mark, you have to stop doing these other things. And I go, 
why? You know, one workshop was on Wednesday evening. I'll be free on Wednesday evenings. The other ones I could do on weekends. I'm free on weekends. No, 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 Mark. You have to. You are directing this film. Yeah, you had, that has to be your sole focus. And I remember resenting that. Going, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do these other things too. And ironically, I did shut down all the other things. But the irony is. Now we're deep into pre-production and I'm, we're working Monday through Friday and I have a stu at the studio and I have my office and we're setting everything up. And I remember <clears throat> hitting the first weekend and everybody said, okay, it was Friday. Okay, see you on Monday. I go, Monday? Well, what are we doing Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> Nothing. Well, what am I going to do Saturday and Sunday? I was so used to working seven days a week, doing something every single day. Now I'd shut down all the other stuff, and now I didn't have that other thing. So I had to make a whole shift in my way of approaching the work. I mean, it was absolutely right. You know, I, I needed to totally focus on the film, and I, and I did, and all that. But it, that was a shift. So I think for anybody considering making that kind of change, think about what you're used to and what your patterns are and what you can handle and what you can't handle and what the day job is. And my feeling is if you get to the point where you say, I better quit the day job because this other stuff that I'm doing, which is my dream, is demanding so much of my time and attention. And I say, well, then it's time to quit. It's time to quit. What did you end up doing for the first few Saturdays and Sundays of that directing job? I don't know. It was, it was hard. It was, it was really hard because there was nobody in the office, nobody I could talk to. You know, I'd go back and I'd read the script again and I'd make notes and I would do, do my own research or planning. But I'm the type of artist who loves to collaborate. I love other people being around. So I love being at the studio. I love working with the designers and I love working with the casting director. I loved working with all these people. And suddenly you leave me for two days and nobody to talk to. And I felt lost. Anyway, we like, could be home with my family, that's fine, but I wanted to do, the, I wanted to, I really literally, I think at that time, wanted to, why can't we work th through the weekend too? Why do we have to stop for the weekend? But that's just my personality. It's a great story. Yeah. Oh. I like that. So then when that job was over, <clears throat> you knew, was that, was that your, your test? Right well, when, when, that, when, ironically, when that job was over, and now I had a, a terrific agency, not an agent, but an agency working for me, and I was reading a lot of scripts because I was directing a, a studio picture, and um, scripts were being sent to me to see if I was interested in it, and all of this, that, the other thing. And I was trying, the, the goal now is to set up the next project because this project is coming near an end. Set up the next project. And I, without, I can't mention the agencies and all that. Oh, but, that's fine. Um, my agent, big agency, said, you know, I, I said, let's set up the next project. And they said to me, <coughs> the ag agency said to me, uh, well, let's see how this movie does first. And I'll never forget this. And I was sitting there, and there were inquiries from other studios about things. And I said, well, can we set something? Let's see how this film does first. And I knew at that moment, because we're near, we're near the end of post-production, that the film was not going to do well for a lot of reasons. I knew that. It's not, it's not going to be like, wow, let's hire this guy even though the reactions to the footage and the reactions to the performances all were great and everything, I said, this is not going to do well, and I knew why. And I said to the agent, I said, listen, if the film does really well, I don't need you. If it doesn't do well, you can't help me. I said, we have to do it now, and they said no. And I knew that that was the end of my relationship with that agency, and it was, and I switched agents. <clears throat> but the film did not do well. I did not get another job set up. And I was doing fine because the film paid well, 
But then that's only going to last so long. And it was months later, still trying to set up the next job, that I realized I have to do something to generate income. I can't go back and do theater now because it'll take me too long to set up a play that I'm going to direct at a local theater. I can't go back to television because I've been out of television for too long and it's going to take time. I need, in other words, I need income now. And so I started teaching. And that's when, the, that was the beginning of the whole teaching thing that has led to where I am now. And then in between you've written two books? <coughs> Written two books. Two books, yep. wow. And there's another one in the works, which will be done someday. Yep. That's a great story. I'm sure it's a painful one at that time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great story. <coughs> it's very painful to be... Um, I'll tell you one thing that's very painful. At that studio, which is a big studio, and we were shooting on a lot that was not at that studio. So the times I would go to that studio and people would see me while we were shooting. They'd come up, oh, love your film, love your deal. I go to your dailies every day. I go. <laughs> and this, these are people who <clears throat> are not working on the film. They're just at the studio. They would just go to see the stuff that we had shot. So you have all that, <clears throat> that, um, that build up, that sort of support and feeling like, wow, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well here. All of that. And then during post-production, which is, I could tell you this whole story of post-production and how it all slowly fell apart. Um, sometimes because of distrust, sometimes because of sabotage by other people, and sometimes because of infighting inside the studio because there were studio executives who wanted the film to fail. And, I'll, and I ran into it. And at the very end of that whole journey with that studio, I was asked to meet with the head of the studio. He was a sweet guy, nice guy. We had a long talk about And he said, Mark, you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I go, well, that doesn't help me at all. So it was very, it was very painful. Yeah. When you think, okay, now the career is starting to move. Now I'm moving and now I'm doing well and now they like the work and they like me and all that. 